Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. This is guest speaker, Abby Gamboa. Yeah. Abby Gamboa. Hey, yeah. hey guys. I'm hey. back. You I'm back and better natural. than ever, baby. That was great. <laughs> I just want to say best intro. Best intro. Yeah. I've been dreaming about doing a podcast intro. And here it is. I didn't even Checked know. Off I'm the bucket list. <laughs> I'm so happy. I was made for this moment. I was, I was made Literally for the everything podcast. else pales in comparison oh to God. this. To the intro. You're like, I just want to thank Aaron for allowing me to. I just want to thank you guys for inviting me again. Here we are back a couple hours later. A couple you know, hours. Boom, boom. Here we go. About to dive boom, in. Boom. Who's drawing? I'll draw. Okay. Give me a drum roll. Drum roll. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? We just had the bowl uploaded with questions. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. And just so you know, these two questions that we're about to draw, nobody on the podcast right now knows what they are. So that's not always the case. But with this one. Hopefully you could hear that. Just we so don't know the intro. what it is. And here we go. My hands hurt. Ah. All right. The question is, are aliens real? And if so, how does the gospel apply to them? Stop. You're lying. I'm just kidding. Stop. That is not the question. Wait, wait, wait. Do they have? Do that they is have not a the soul? question. Do they have a soul? We're not I'm getting talking serious. About that. In, in between, like, in is it be- like a dog situation, or is it more? Are they closer to humans? I was literally oh like, uh, I feel like we should bring game. game Rafi was yeah, telling us. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to need a UFOs, special uh, expert. In between ser- uh, All right, we're going to get serious. Sessions, so. uh, don't but right, here's serious. Protect serious. my testimony. Here's the, here's, here's the <laughs> real question. How? I feel like this is a real question that a lot of young people actually uh, walk through. So it's a great one. But how do I guard my heart when gossip presents itself? Oof. I kind of feel like we were supposed to talk about this. this How do crazy. I guard my heart Yeesh. when gossip presents itself? And this question is asked by Boaz in Dallas, Texas. From Dallas, hey. Texas. Hey, buddy. Dallas, hometown. Let's go. All right. Uh, I like how you just slightly rephrased. Let me find my phone rephrased. so I can put a... Uh-huh. Hmm. All right, here we go. 15-minute timer. Starting... Now I can hear the turning of the pages. Ooh. Both Rafi and Sarah Beth are getting their Get nose in the out. word. Let's go. They're bringing their so swords. Who's, who's starting us off? Uh, can you read the question one more time? How do you protect your heart when gossip presents itself? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're talking as if you're in a situation where someone starts slandering or gossiping about someone else and you're the person who's listening to the conversation. You're not necessarily the person that's like, let's talk about this or let's... Yeah, so someone is gossiping about someone else to you. you told how them about them. Oh, say it again. Say it again. Say it again, Rafi. Have you told them about this? Have have you say it again. Told you them about this. this. Have, have you told them, them about this? About this? Have this you told like, them about this? Family time. Family time. Family time is a really good place to start. I wonder where Sarah Beth opened to. James. Okay. So. I mean, I opened to Matthew 18. Okay. Where Jesus basically says, if you have an issue with someone, mm-hmm. go directly to them. Mm-hmm. If you cannot resolve it, then bring it before a leader. And he gives this progression of like dealing with an issue that two people have with each other. Mm-hmm. And I mean, gossip just like, because, yeah, I mean, we don't have to. All I'm saying is there is a biblical prescription on how to do this. And it's, it's okay for you to just sh- like shut down. You should become a robot. Honestly, that's what I try to do. Because once that happens, it's like, have you told them about this? Have you told them about this? And they're like, yeah. well, I don't know. They're, maybe I'm jumping too far ahead into a conclusion. But no, this, is, this, this, is is... What, this is how I would answer the question. So. Hmm. I want to yeah. read Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. I know when I read this for the first time, I was like, wow, this makes so much sense. Um, okay, so it says, actually, Proverbs, wait, where am I? Proverbs 16, starting in 27. Yeah. A worthless person digs up evil. And in parentheses, it says gossip. It is like scorching fire on his lips. A deceitful person stirs up strife, 
and a slanderer can separate even close friends. Oh my goodness. So I think like there is no gray area to this. Not really. It's very black and white. And I don't think that means that if someone starts gossiping, you have to be like, you're gossiping and you're sinning and I can't be part of this conversation. Like you can speak truth in love, but be firm and be like, I, I feel like we shouldn't be talking about this person. Or like Rafi said, have you talked to this person? And if they're like, yeah, I have. Okay, well, I feel like we maybe we shouldn't be talking about them like this, you know? And um, really just like putting a stake in the ground because in James 3, it says that the tongue is a fire and who can tame it? Mm. And so it's like, I can just read it, but um, being aware that our tongues can lead us somewhere that we never intended to go. And it can like tear people down. And rip people apart. And also remembering that you're like, whoever you're talking about, they're a creation of God, just like you are. And. Um, There's a lot of stuff in James about this. Mm-hmm. Your tongue is a rudder. Yeah. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Right. It's all in three, chapter three. Like um, a harmless word mm-hmm. is not a harmless word. It, right. Words do a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm actually thinking Wasn't there of a, a, staying, a saying, not a staying, a yeah. saying um, that's like sticks and stones may break my bones, but, but words, words will never hurt, hurt me. That's that is so, so silly. not true. So yeah. off. It's I actually, delusion. I'm thinking of one uh-huh. story that I'll, that I'll share of just like what gossip can do. Cause yeah. it's, it's a friend of mine and he grew up in a small town and he's a little bit more like kind of expressive, emotional right. in a small town, in a Southern state. And when he was like 11 years old, a rumor started that he was gay. Oh. He was not gay, never had any interest in that. Never, it was nothing like, I mean, there was nothing other than he was just kind of a big personality, but that continued to be a joke that was made of this and that. Mm. And he said it followed him into high school mm. where he was off doing things. He's brilliant. Like the dude is so successful now. And he was always had that in him, but he moved hundreds of miles away to go to college and was doing all this stuff and got involved in a ministry. And he tells this story about, he was like 21 years old and he was about to like speak as a part of this college ministry. And the, the people who ran the college ministry heard from people in his hometown no, 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 no. that he might be gay. And they said, you can't, we're not going <gasps> to let you speak. And we're actually going to take you out of the, so like the power Ugh, of gossip, word. of rumors Ugh. is like, it's number one, it's so demonic. Yeah. But I know that the person who started that rumor about him, they probably didn't realize how much life, a life of its own that that can take on. But I'm thinking of these scriptures in James and it's mm-hmm. like, your words have way more power than you it realize. It can separate the closest of friends or it can do something oh like you just gosh. said, which is like change the trajectory of something because Someone's of a rumor. Life. Yeah. <laughs> and it like, I know for Aaron and I, we've grown a lot in this area. We still have room to grow. But I think if you're out there and you're like, well, then who do I vent to, right? Like, who do I talk to? Because if you're married like us, then you're probably like, you're probably more prone to gossip with your spouse because you're together at the end of the day, you're cooking dinner together. You just had separate days with different people and things hurt you and you want to talk about it. And I think there is space for that if you are keeping your heart open and you've already talked to that person. But what I have noticed is if we find ourselves talking about someone or telling each other about how someone hurt us or whatever, my view of the person that Aaron's telling me about, excuse me, is completely tainted in a moment. I will see that person the next day. And right. I'm like, you You've got little, a lens now. <laughs> how dare you? Right. And you have a lens that you see them through. And so I think we just like have to approach this with fear and trembling um, because it can, oh, it can set a then, fire. Because then, not a good oh, fire. Okay. I'll stop. You guys haven't even talked yet. No, no, no. Aaron, no. Abby. I really want to hear what you were going to say. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm just thinking of people do get things horribly wrong. I've gotten things horribly wrong. And when you're in like in a culture that even tolerates gossip, you're taking so much of that person's opportunity away to redeem their life, to redeem their actions, to step into a new light. I feel like, especially in churches, it's so hard for people to come back from being viewed that way because 
you do one thing wrong and then suddenly every I'm thinking of people in my mind mm -hmm. that I'm like, I know it's hard for them. I know that they walk around feeling like people view me this way because of maybe I'm not that long out of a certain lifestyle or maybe I'm, and it's like, that's the opposite of what we're called to the Grace ministry of reconciliation mercy. actually like our words have power in the other way that we, I don't, I, I mean, I'm kind of, that's, I want that's you guys good. to talk though. Cause this is, this is good. Well, I think of Proverbs 26. Um, in verse 17, it's going to talk about quarrels that exist between two people or an argument, a oh. strife, a, a conflict. Um, and it says this, it says, he who passes by and meddles in a quarrel that is not his own mm. is like someone who takes a dog by the ears. Oh my gosh. So when I think about this question, when gossip is presented mm. to me, it wasn't my choice, but now I'm passing by a quarrel. Mm. I'm passing by a conflict. Let's say that uh, Abby and Serbeth have a conflict and you're telling me about it, Rafi. <laughs> well, now I have a moment to either, what the Bible says, grab a dog by the ear like insert myself into this, insert my opinion, insert my, well, this is what I think, or, oh my gosh, why do they do that? Or didn't, you know, you start, we start talking about it and the Bible likens that to grabbing a dog by the ears. Meaning what that tells me by me is you might get bit. Like you might. Or it's like so ridiculous that you would never, like we would never grab Nala by the ears. Yeah, that's our dog. But it if would you, hurt her. That's the thing. If you grab yeah. a dog by the ear, you're probably going to get bit. That dog is probably going to bite you. Oh, that's gonna, true. That's it's good. Gonna, it's going to latch at you. Maybe a yeah. nice dog, but the moment you grab it by the ears, like you're setting yourself up to to take a blow. Maybe that's what Rosie that did last night. Nala snapped at her when I wasn't looking, and maybe she grabbed her by the <laughs> she ears. She probably grabbed her by the ears. But then it keeps. <laughs> it's going to keep going though, and it says. Uh, for like a madman who throws arrows of oh, fire and oh, arrows oh. of death Oof. is the man who deceives his neighbor and then says, I was, oh, I was only joking. <gasps> for where there is no wood, Proverbs. the fire goes out. And, what, and where there is no gossip, the conflict ceases. Ooh. So it's wow. like, it's like gossip packed. throws wood on a conflict and yes. makes it bigger than it than it needs to be. Oh but where there's no gossip, the con the conflict ceases. Like if I've, probably majority of our problems in our life become so big because of the gossip that's surrounding it, that the actual conflict is not that big and will probably work itself out. You know, like I think of Jesus and the Pharisees. I think, I think one of the things that ultimately killed Jesus was the gossip that surrounded him. Meaning the Pharisees were normally approaching Jesus because of something they heard about him oh. so they're approaching him with their already tainted minds of this man who's preaching of this one from nazareth of this one who's some healing say people. you da -da -da -da. some say yeah. you know and he's like who do you say i am right and he's like he's gonna cut right through that thing yeah with with peter he does he's like hey who do they say that i am well, well some, some are saying this say some this. are saying that some mm -hmm. are, okay but what about you what are you saying it's like you are the christ the, the christ. son of god it's like it cuts through the, yes. the weird funk that's crazy that is presented when gossip again it's just that mm -hmm. picture like gossip is the same thing as you grabbing a dog by the like you're gonna get bit mm -hmm. you're gonna get some teeth in your skin Oof. and what do you think abby i'm thinking about a conversation i had recently with a friend mm -hmm. and i was asking him because he said something i actually just talked about this in another podcast recently but it's been like something that has so moved me mm. and it started to readjust how I view people and how I view life. Wow. But he was, he basically said, and I don't even remember the context of our conversation, but he said, I try my best to view people based on the connection I've had with them, mm. not based That's on so what church they're a part of or who their friends are, are or what people have said about them. I try to base how I relate to them based on how we have related to each other, based on my experience of them. Yes. And so I asked him, I was like, that is so beautiful. I want to do that. What do you do when someone that you trust, like I thought about like mentors in my life or like leaders in my life, or even like siblings, like my closest people. Mm -hmm. What do you do when someone like that comes to you and quote warns you 
about that person, Oof. about this other person. Like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, a lot of gossip is it's, in that. Yeah, it's the like the name me, of protection, yes. the name of let's pray, the name of I yes. need to process, the name of. There, and yeah, and but also, what is that line? There is also know. there is also a place for that too. That's yes. what I'm thinking, yeah. and I think like. I think everything that we're saying, there's a place kind of for all of it. There's a place to process in safety. There's a place to, I was even thinking about um, when you were saying like, like, have you talked to that person? I'm thinking about specific things that are very fresh and the difference between hearing somebody process something from a tender place of pain and then from a seasoned, bitter place of pain and how it's different. Like, I don't know. Oh. I, you know, like you can sit with someone in their tears and be like, gosh, you're in pain. How can I like help you? And then you can sit with someone and you feel disgusting after it's you slimed. leave with them. Because they've already talked to yeah, all like these it's, other people. You're not done. going, there's no help yeah. at that point. Because the offense has like found footing already. Yeah, and exactly. Then, yeah. It's as so, an offended brother is like a fortified city. Wow. Yeah. And it's all, that's what I feel like. It's like, you're like, we're not even talking anymore. You're reiterating what you've talked to someone else about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's not processing. So, okay, wait. So let me, no, that's not, that's just talking. Yeah. So the end of the story is, I feel like I just took like all these different avenues, but he said, he told me a story. He answered my question with a story. He said, there's this guy who came into the community I'm a part of and it got real messy real fast. He like came deep into our community, became a part of our school of ministry and got involved with a girl and it got really messy really fast. And he didn't tell me details. He didn't say if it was physical. He didn't say if it was like abuse. I have no idea what happened, but it got weird and bad to the point that this man was asked to leave their community. Like, like fully removed. And people came to this friend that I'm talking to and said, uh, like, if he reaches out to you, like, you know, don't, don't engage it. It's not going to be good. It's not good where he's at. Like, just leave it. It's not going to be good for you. A warning, like what I was asking him about. Mm -hmm. And he said, I felt God asked me to engage him Mm -hmm. if he reached out. And I didn't know what that meant. He just asked me to keep my heart open. And so the guy reached out a couple weeks later and he was like, I'm struggling. Um, could you talk? And my friend said, yeah, I can. They texted for 15 minutes. He like gave him 15 minutes of his time over text. And what ended up happening led to a huge part. Oh, there's Why our did timer. that scare me? I know. I was <laughs> like, <"Jump." laughs> but it led to a huge part of this man's breakthrough. And he ended up like wow. leading him through. He was, he basically asked him, have you talked to God about this? Mm-hmm. And the man said, I, I haven't known how to approach God Aww. about this. And my friend was like, well, get, let me give you like some tools that I use to connect with God in places like this. And it ended up leading to the, like, this man was like, I haven't felt the Lord like this since everything happened. I haven't been able to. So the whole point was like, who am I to deny somebody connection and grace? Because of what someone else said. Yes. And and something that I need daily. Like, who am I to deny them that when I could give them that? Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. You know? Yeah. So it's just something I've been navigating of like, oh, when is it when is it fruitful to sit with someone in their process? Mm-hmm. When is it actually more harmful to them and to me and my view of that person that they're processing about? Um and I don't know that there's a cut and dried answer. Yeah. I think it's what Rafi said of like, you have you talked to the person? I've even had friends be like, give give that person a time frame. Yeah. Like not to be messed up, but if you can't get with them in the next week or two, I'm going to have to bring this Good to point. that. Yes. Yeah. Like that kind of freaks me out. I had a friend tell me that one time and I was like, oh, shoot. Because then it's Who? like, I mean, that person loves you. Yeah. Were they telling you, like, giving were, you a time frame? No, she oh. was telling me a story about someone who came to her with issues with another oh, person. Oh. And she said that thing to them. Have That's you talked love. to them? I know. Because that stuff, it's okay to be upset at someone. Yeah. It happens. But then you got to talk about but it. When, yeah, when you just leave it there, it's like, it's like that milk in the fridge. Like, it's going <laughs> to get nasty. Curdled. It there. Yeah. Curdled. Our timer's over, right? I think there's just so much wisdom to holding our tongues. Yes. It's threaded all throughout Proverbs. So if you're wanting 
wondering where to start with this, you're struggling with it. I know I struggled a lot with it when I was younger and it all came from a place of pain. <laughs> like I would, my mom probably remembers this. Shout out to my mom. If you're listening, I would just come home and tell her, I would just gossip about people I was around that day. Like, can you believe? And I wanted her to be like, yeah, that wasn't right. And I'm so sorry. And there is a person you can do that with. And it's the Lord. Mm-hmm. And when, because like, I mean, my mom's amazing. So she was probably like, well, let's try to see them, how Jesus sees them. And I'm like, I don't want to mom. But Dang, your mom's if I, awesome. and my mom's amazing. But if I take it to the Lord, then he's the one who created them. And he's the one who can truly give me eyes to see them like he sees them. Yeah. And so I think if you're wondering where to start, look up, you know, Proverbs about gossip. I just did that. And there's like 20 mm. verses that came up. Um, and, and, and if there's a person that you're struggling with specifically, like I wouldn't, I, I would kind of take a different take on it. I wouldn't go to them right away because I think there's a lot of wisdom to sitting with the Lord before you go to a person. I was upset with someone in my life last week and I was just about to go let him have it. Oh. And I was in the shower and the Lord was like, I think you should wait. I, I, it's, I think we should talk about this first before right. you go talk to that person. Go, just yeah. Breathe. yeah. Yeah. And just like, let it out on the Lord, be honest with him and then let him give you his perspective of that person. But there's just so much wisdom to holding the tongue. And I think in the younger generation specifically, there's this lie that goes around. That's like, if you're not honest and if you don't tell them how you really feel, then you don't really love them or you're not really in close relationship with them. So you need to just go, you know, let it out. And I just, I think there's a lot of, immaturity to that um i'm not saying don't be honest but i am saying a way to prevent gossip is to go straight to the lord first yes yeah we jump into handlebars i'm thinking about you're just making me think like i'm thinking of the story of the prodigal son yeah. how story is the diff- how different is the story <laughs> i do that all, all the time, time. I, I, how the story I, is the different i tongue tie my words but how different is the story yeah if the father sends uh the younger son away and then goes and gossips about the younger son to the brother who stayed. Who knows how it could have impacted his trajectory. He may have never came back. Yes. His words are, they have the power of death and life. But, life and death. But, like, but you don't see that. Instead, you see the father waiting. Right. Never he's, not, he's never changing. He's not yeah. speaking about, he's not gossiping around. He's, he's just waiting. For, and and I, that's what I, the picture I think of when I'm hearing you say, hold your tongue. Yeah. Like, uh, I think, I think, holding your tongue and knowing the one that you can let it loose with is the father, Mm -hmm. you know, because he's going to give you his perspective. He's going to give you his leadership. Or like, imagine how many Um, times Jesus could have said, Hey, they just said they might kill me to his disciples or, you know, and he held his tongue until the right moment when he's like, I'm going to be offered up. And he, he didn't gossip, even though he probably had so many opportunities where people were doing wrong. And he's like, I just need to talk to somebody. That's when he'd go to the mountain with the father. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start us off in handlebars. Uh, speaking of the father, I want to give a phrase that a father in the faith to me, his name is Phil Smith. Phil, if you ever hear this, I mm. love you. You have been just a champion to me in life, but probably we most of us you, around Phil. this table. Yeah. Um, but he, he told me one time, he said, I want to define gossip for you. For you. Mm. Gossip is this. It is talking about anything that you are neither part of the problem nor the solution. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Gossip is talking about anything that you're neither part of the problem nor the solution. So that helps me, like mm-hmm. Abby, with your question of someone wanting to come process with me. Okay, well, the person processing with me, am I a pastor to them? Am I a mentor to them? Mm-hmm. Am I someone who's speaking into their life? I am. Okay, I can probably help be part of the solution. That's so See good. what I'm saying? That disarms the gossip right there. It's like, yeah, let me help you be part of the solution. Yeah. I'm going to have the authority to send that per- like to give that person a time frame. Yeah. Like, hey, thanks for sharing this with me. I love you. Here's my advice. Now you have whatever, a week to go talk to this person or yeah. I'm a- why can I do that? Because I have authority in their life. Now, if it's, it's someone who's like a peer that comes to me and like, hey, I want to tell you something, da, 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 you know, and I'm not a part of the problem. I'm not going to be a part of the solution. Well, now we're just gossiping. Like I'm just a place for you to just slander someone. Yeah. You know, so that that definition has helped me so much that gossip is talking about something that you're neither part of the problem nor the solution. And yeah. then my handlebar, I've given this for other things before, I think. Um, but it's a phrase the Lord gave me years ago and it's it's vent up, um, counsel down. down. And so if you have a frusta- frustration, if you have something you're upset about and you need to vent, you need to let it out. I need to talk to someone about this. Well, vent up, vent to a pastor, vent to a father, vent to a mother, vent to 
an authority, a vent to someone who someone has who's not going to take a voice in your gossip. life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to correct you, to walk with you, to be with you. And then when you counsel, counsel down, counsel to those that you are overseeing, counsel to those that you do have authority over. And that right there, that handlebar alone, I promise you, will be like a plumb line for you to keep you from gossip. So mm-hmm. that's, that's my handlebar. Good. That's so good. That vent up, counsel down is. It's a handlebar. It's a seatbelt. It's a armrest. <laughs> it's the that one is rear so view good. mirror. Yeah, I have um, I have one. I'm thinking of also something that I've heard our pastor say, which is that only the cross can deal with sin. And basically, what he's implying is you can't. Mm-hmm. Your wisdom, your opinion, your thoughts about this situation. Like sometimes when. I, I think the way the question was framed, it was like when gossip presents itself. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times it can present itself as I need advice about this. Right. Do you think what they did was wrong? How do you? And it's like this thing rises up in you a little bit sometimes of I do have something to say. Like, oh, I have an opinion that would like I really need to because we need to set that person straight like or whatever it is. And it's like. It, ultimately, if you're dealing with sin, you don't have the power to. And and he would say, because if you try, it will get on you, which I think is similar to the dog situation. He would just always say, you try to deal with sin outside of the cross, meaning the revelation of what it is, like yeah. the forgiveness of it, the love of it, like at, like as if this person owes you anything, like any of those realities coming into play, anything outside of the cross, that sin, you'll try to go in there and fix it and it will get on you because you don't have the power to deal with it in, in whatever way. So it's there's good. that one. And then also I have also talked about this on the podcast, um, but second Corinthians five talks about that. We have a ministry and the ministry is reconciling people back to the father. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest ways that he says that we do this is we regard no one according to the flesh. And I think gossip is like the biggest opportunity to regard someone according to the flesh. Cause like Abby said, you're not even looking at the person. You're just hearing information about them and you're like, Oh wow, that's bad. You know? <laughs> and, and it actually says like, now that we're in Christ, we, we never regard someone according to the flesh. And so those are my two handlebars is like, like go to the cross to deal with sin. It's the only place where sin can be dealt with. And then also practice, regard no one according to the flesh, practice this. Like, and I want to also backtrack because I had said something like there's a place for a warning about someone. And I would say, I don't know if that's really true. I think, I think, just for the sake of the example, if I saw, let's say Abby was getting into a relationship with someone or was being around a community that I had, that was a stumbling block to other people that I knew, I don't think I would, I would fully like stop her or give a warning until I saw something in Abby. Mm. And then if I saw something of that because what I'm doing is I'm wedging myself, like you said, and maybe Abby's called to impact that community. So I'm wedging myself in there saying, but if I start to see something and, and, and it just purifies everything, I'm seeing this trait, like sort of come, Abby, that's not you. Well, you're speaking to who you do have relationships with. Yeah, that was so powerful what you said. And so I wanted to backtrack. I don't know if there really is a place to be like, don't go around those people. That's so good. Cause that's, yeah, it's just. I think there's also on that same note, there's also a place when you are asked like, Hey, I'm, I was asked to like, be a part of this thing. You did something with them. How, like, how was it for yeah. you? Like, wow. where, like being asked, cause I had a situation recently with someone who's very close to me who had an opportunity to like be a part of something. And he was like, you did, you did something with them a couple of years ago. How was that? And that was, that's different, I think, than like inserting yeah. a, from a place of fear or from, because I also had something like that happen recently where someone inserted their opinion and their thoughts about someone based on pain and fear that the pain would repeat itself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, 100%. Does. So I think it also is how the conversation is approached. Yeah. Um, That's good. Yeah. But I agree that there's not really a place for warnings 
yeah from the get-go. like after you talked about it i was like yeah oh also that's a third handlebar have you <laughs> talked to them about this how the song go? Have you talked yeah. talk to, to them about, about this? this? Have you talked to them it's about a chance. Like, have so will save you. This? So will save you. Because like what Sarah Beth said, it's good to talk to the Lord about everything. Mm-hmm. But if you're at the point where you're talking to another person, mm-hmm. that's time to ask the person, have you talked to them about this? Mm-hmm. So Yeah. The order is you talk to God. You talk to the person. Yes. And then you, you probably won't have to talk to anyone else. To. Yeah. 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 But, you, you, but most of the time you won't. Yeah. If, you, if there needs to be there. other people, that's the last point. Resort. Yep. Last Amen. resort. Okay. Handlebar. Okay. My handlebar would be if you're in a situation where you're talking to someone and they start to gossip, be bold. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be mean, but be bold and either take the conversation a different way. And if they keep bringing it back, cause I've been there where you're like, so what are we going to, you know, what do you want for lunch? Or you're like, take the conversation somewhere else. And if they bring it back, then's your opportunity to go, Hey, I really don't think we should talk about this right now, but I'd love to talk about something else, you know, and just be bold. Um, and then my second one, while you're in that situation, if you are struggling with talking about other people or other situations, I've found that most of the time it's gossip. If I'm in a conversation, let's say me and Abby are in a conversation, but we're not talking about me and we're not talking about you. We're not talking about our husbands or whatever. We're talking about someone else and their situation. Normally, that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. It's not life-giving. It can be sometimes, but normally that's the slippery slope of, did you hear about so-and-so? I mean, that right there, red flag. Even if it's not like a terrible thing that that person did or whatever. Yes. If you are in relationship with someone talking to them and you are talking about someone that's not in the room that, you know, you're not going to see for a while, whatever, usually that will lead to gossip. And so try the handlebar is when you're with someone, you're hanging out, you're on a lunch date, whatever. Talk about yourselves to each other. Ask that person, what's going on with you? How are you? Not did you hear about Sally Sue? Like, you know, Talk about each other. that was a rhyme. That's such anyway, an easy way to hide. It's an easy way to check yourself is don't talk about people that aren't in the room. Well, and we see this so often with like people we know and we're walking with communities we're a part of, but we sometimes don't see it so much with the greater church. Like when I'm listening to you talk about, about this right now, I'm thinking about the amount of people who have approached me about the Hillsong documentary. He- and like, they've been like, have haven't you, seen it? Have you watch watched it. the Hillsong documentary? And I, and here's just a, a uh, an example of how you can practice this. My answer has been, oh no, I don't watch stuff like that. It's literally been my response like, oh, okay. to a handful of people. Do you see that Hillsong documentary? If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't go look up. Please you know, don't. Just no. Let it be. But <laughs> if you do know what I'm talking about, no. this is a perfect example of where it's, no, I don't watch stuff like that. Why? Because Hillsong is it's a divisive. church with leaders yeah. that love God, that have real hearts and real families. <laughs> and who are we to slander and criticize the church? Yet we see that I'm using Hillsong as an example, but we do that at large with other ministries yeah. and other Did you hear about churches this that Did we you? don't yeah. know. We're not walking with them. Yeah. Yet we see, yeah. we know their name. And so we think we can throw our opinion in the ring. And it feels like Kim Kardashian and Kanye and the, yeah. go- the gossip section. Yeah, and- no. Did you read that it's article like- on Elevation? No, I don't read stuff I don't like read that. many articles, to be honest. You know, like- Did you see that? No, I don't. No. I didn't, and I don't want to. So yeah, that's just an easy I way think to about stop that it. A lot. What? Just like people, especially in church, but even like Kim and Kanye. I'm like, who are we to be in there? We, I don't we know don't them. We don't know them. Yeah. We never I will. Don't know. That is the one thing about pop culture that I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand why we're exposing so much about people's lives. And some of it is just made up crap. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's demonic. I will say I watched a documentary over Christmas about, I won't even say what it was, but like an issue in the world. And it was like one person had this side, the other person had this side. And then this person came out with a documentary that's like, this is the truth behind everything I've experienced. Everyone needs to know what's going on behind the scenes. And I got so into it. And I looked up (laughs) articles about it and I watched YouTube videos about it and I had demonic dreams that night. And I'm not talking about dreams where you're like, I saw something dark. I'm talking about dreams where you feel things on your body. Like it was nasty. It was gross. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't like that word, but it was gross. (laughs) And I realized, I was like, where did that come from? What happened? And it was watching that documentary. And so it's like, be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little mouth what you say because you are opening yourself up to- and Demonic at the end of the day, stuff. it's what you just said, Aaron. Like they are people. Yeah. They right. are people yeah. who have the same tendencies and the same, like, just like Jesus 
felt everything that we feel. We we're just hu- like we're just a bunch of humans just trying to figure out life, yeah. and just because somebody is on a platform with like and th- that's a bigger conversation of like there's higher stakes and bigger accountability and all yeah. these things. The more responsibility that you're given, yeah. But at the end of the day, we're all just humans who yeah. are like trying to figure it out, and those people have people that they're walking with. It's not yeah. me, right? Right. So, so the moral of the story is don't gossip. Just don't, don't gossip. gossip. My handlebar would be, and this doesn't feel like really a a real handlebar because it's a little ethereal or it's a little like an idea that you have to figure out how to do on a daily basis, but believe the best about others. I have been stuck in 1 Corinthians 13. I'd never read it in the Passion until this week. And it's just like getting me. It's so good. But verse seven says, love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. Yes. And I, just, it got me because I was like, oh yeah, love can always be safe because it's always believing the best. That's so good. Regardless yeah. of what it's heard, regardless of even what it's experienced, because it goes deeper to like, yes, I want to relate to someone based on my experience in a sanctified way because- if I'm always relating to you based on my experience of you, I don't know. That's another that's yeah. another thing where you got to like sit with God about your own hurt about people. But I think just believing, choosing to believe the best. So good. But to whatever also, degree. Like, I think mm, this is like what the gospel gives us. Yeah. It's a, I can't yeah. just do that. Yeah. What you're well, talking about. Love covers a multitude that. of sins. Yeah. I have to be loved. Right. Yes. I have to know what it feels like to be loved in that mm. way. Yeah. So my only requirement to do what you're saying is let the Lord love me yes. that way. So and good. when I've been loved that way. It's a lot harder to deny someone. Yeah. It's like, that wait, wait, wait. Once wait, you've wait. been given it. He never did that to me. Yeah. He never gossiped about me. Yeah. He yes. has me. Yeah, he receipts on me. my life. He does I mean, I Lord. Even- could expose me so hard. So hard. <laughs> well, but, but I've doesn't. even experienced that with people in my life that like, I think about Melissa Smith, Bill's wife, who's like my mom. And she knows so, she could destroy <laughs> receipts. me. She got receipts. <laughs> she could destroy everyone's perception of me. One post. It takes one sentence. One sentence. I began blah, blah, And I'd be ruined. And God is like that. Like the amount of things he's he seen us since before. Never. And he know he knows something. Mm-hmm. He knows that that transforms. That kind of love transforms. The, the covering yes. love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could talk about this forever. <laughs> yes, we're at time and yeah. we're at the end of the season. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, oh wow. So we'll see you next season. We normally end by saying <laughs> see you next week or see you next episode, but We'll see you next been real, y'all. season. So, <laughs> hey, here's a couple ways uh, you could help us. Um, we have a website, thehandlebarpodcast.com. If you have a question you'd like to submit, you can do that on our website. Also, we now have a formal Instagram account. So if you want to follow us on social media, you can do that. It's at Handlebar Podcast. Um, drop the the, just at Handlebar Podcast. <laughs> Um, follow us there. Uh, comment, subscribe, like. Tell us what episodes that you really enjoyed. How did it help you? Um, send it to a friend. Have conversations. Open your Bible together. Um, we love you, and we've just been so sobered by the amount of Gen Zers that are listening. And we want to just declare: uh, Rafi is the only Gen Zer at the table. So the other three millennials that are sitting here, we see you. We love you. We honor you. We yeah, want Gen we Z to be yeah. uh, just the the greatest generation that it can be before the Lord. And so, um, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We're out. Abby, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. We love you. See you next season. <laughs>